that you uh, were working on this and you made a mistake and uh, you found your mistake and you fixed your mistake. That's my dream for you. Okay, it's a good, it's a good dream to have because uh, I've heard it said that uh, there's there's two kinds of people: those who have it, uh, uh, those who have made a mistake, and those who haven't made one yet. And so you're just you're always gonna make mistakes, and if you have just <laughs> been getting it right, just killing it this whole time, hopefully you just never have a problem. But it, it'd be great if you had a problem while you were here and you figured out what the heck happened. Um, so there's a good chance that, uh, that most of you got these without too much trouble. And then more likely these ones that you had some issue with. Those negatives, uh, if you had issue, probably the negatives are the ones that you had issue with. Because okay, you, you got the negative in there and then uh, if you're not careful, you do something like negative one cubed. Now let's do the squared part. If we did uh, plus eight times negative one squared. And when you do negative one squared, what should we come out with? It should be positive one. So if you're not paying attention, you might come out with, uh, if you might do one times one, it have to be negative. Right. With all these negatives flying around, these powers, uh, it can definitely be easy to lose track of what you're doing. So hopefully you, you've made some mistakes and you've also had the opportunity to find those mistakes and fix them and realize where the pitfalls are for you, okay? Um, but this, this part of, of the class is just some practice just to reinforce the stuff that we should know. We should know how to plug in an x value and figure out what the y value is, okay? Anybody having trouble that they don't know what we're doing? Doing good. Yeah. Um, this next thing I want to ask you, I, I looked back at the, the video from last class and we had a nice little discussion about this. So uh, I hope this probably goes a little faster than other classes, but if it doesn't, we have time to talk about it again if we want. <coughs> okay. So we put in zero, one, two, three. If we keep going, if we keep going with these x values, four, five, six, seven, and on and on and on forever, okay. what do you think will happen if we were to continue with this table in this direction? What kind of y values would we get? Now, we talked about this in the last class. So you could uh, look back in your photographic memory or in your notes or whatever else. Well, still make a guess. This is this is something I would ask people who didn't even have this discussion. You just think about it. You you see the function there. You know that the the y values you get by putting it in the x values into the function. Okay. So you decide if you were to put the numbers five, six, seven, on and on and on into these x's and add all that all this up. What do you think is going to happen? You're going to get bigger, bigger y values. You're going to get small y values and down to the negative numbers. Bigger. What's that? Bigger. You said, you said bigger. Oh. <laughs> you gotta look at me and make eye contact. Let me see your mouth move. Bigger. <laughs> okay. Uh, you think you're gonna get bigger y values and why do you think that? Why do you think that? How come? Because. Well, you got, I mean, you got this minus 35, you got this minus 7x. Well, yeah, but 8x squared is Okay. Okay. So x cubed and, and eight x squared are going to be bigger than the seven x. Is that going to be negative seven x? Yeah. Eventually. Okay. Eventually, right? Not not necessarily because we've got definitely places where we get negative numbers. Yeah. Right. And that's because when you put a two in here, well, seven times two uh, is going to be pretty big. Thirty five is pretty big. Uh, and, and seven times two is, is a little bit bigger than two times itself three times. Okay. And this negative seven x and this negative thirty five together uh, against these two positive values is a little bit bigger. 
So they bring it down to the negative values. Um, and also one, one is a small number to plug in for x. But as you said, Carl, eventually, if we keep moving in the positive direction for x, that's going to produce bigger and bigger values for y. What about if we go in this direction? If we allow the x values to get more and more into the negatives, then what do you think is going to happen? It seems like we got negative, and then we're up into the positives. Will we keep doing that? Will we keep going into the positive? Will we go down into the negatives? We'll just keep getting bigger and bigger positive numbers. Just following that trend, 3, 31, and then bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Does everybody agree? Mm -hmm. So why do you think that, Dakota? Why do you think we'll just keep getting bigger and bigger positive numbers? This will be minus, but this will be a positive. Yeah. Negative 7 times negative x yeah. value is positive. Uh, this will be positive because you squared it's positive times positive 8. Yeah. And then this will be what? Negative because negative. negative times negative times negative is negative. And since you're, you're saying since this is a is as, as x gets to be more and more negative, this gets to be very large. This gets to also be very large. But the only thing that's negative besides this is this. Yeah. And so these positive things will take us into the positive? Okay. What? Yeah? Anybody else have any other thoughts? Okay. Let's take a moment. I'm going to freeze this real quick. I'm going to set something up. Hold on. Okay, so this is from last time. You can see down here we have x cubed plus 8x squared minus 7x minus 35, just like, just like over here. Okay. I'm going to remind you what this is. Um, as I slide this slider left and right, it changes what gets plugged in for x. Right? So it plugs that number in for x, and, and clearly I've, I've slid these around so that we get uh, the correct coefficients and the constant here. Okay, we're all paying attention. Yeah. So when we plug one in for x here, we get x times or one times one times one, which is one. Uh, here we get one times one times eight, which is eight. Here we get negative seven times one, which is negative seven. You can see that the green bar goes down into the negative y values, and negative thirty-five is just negative thirty-five always. It's not going to change. Okay. If we put in two, well, then two cubed is eight. Uh, two times two is four times eight is thirty-two. Negative 7 times 2 is negative 14, and negative 35 is just negative 35. And over here, you can see there's your 8, plus your 32 gets to 40, minus the, the 14 gets to 26, minus the 35 gets to negative 9. Okay, then we get to 3, your 27 plus your 72, uh, minus your 21, minus your 35 gets to 43. So you can see this, this blue number is the final number when you add them all together. And as expected, when we let x get really big, I'm going to shrink the y-axis so we can bring that stuff back down to where we can see it. No, no, no. OK, there's our x squared. OK. So you can see how our final number is 52,359. If we keep letting x get larger, the y values just keep getting bigger. You can see how big this pink bar is. The x cubed part of it uh, is getting very big, pushing everything further and further into the positive. Okay. Now, now think about that, what I just said. And we're going to come back here. And the point was made that when x is negative, this will be positive, and this will be positive. This little thing, minus 35, that won't be that big a deal because we'll be putting big numbers in for x. Uh, big negative numbers in for x, which means this will be a big thing, and this will be a rather big thing. And the only thing that's negative besides this little 35 here 
will be the x cubed. Okay? And the idea, the theory now is that uh, these two positive, big positive things will cause the whole thing to be positive. Okay, let's go back to the sketch. And look at that pink bar. Huh? What, what does that pink bar represent? X cubed? Yeah. One times X cubed? And what does this red bar represent? The 8X squared. And this, you might not be able to see it, is a green bar. Represents what? Whatever minus 7X is. So if this big pink bar becomes a negative number, what do you think the final, when we add all those up, what do you think will be positive or negative? Is that, is that what we thought? No. That's the opposite of what we thought. Um, just try to move this around. So here, let's stretch this back out. So we're in a reasonable frame. Okay, so we'll bring it back down. Now x is 0. So the only thing that's doing anything is the negative 35, or negative 35. We move into the negatives. Okay, we do have a positive 3. Positive 31, positive 57, positive 75, 79. But now we come back down uh, from 79 to 63. Right. You can see how we were moving up, positive, 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 positive. But then we're starting to come back down. Right? And the values of x are starting to decrease. Or, sorry, the values of y are starting to decrease. Here at negative 8, we've got a positive 21 after we add up negative 512 plus positive 512 um, plus 56 minus 35, we're at 25. Or 21, sorry, we're at 21. Okay. Um, so that, that's a little bit interesting right now. X is negative 8. So this is negative 512 and this is positive 512. They're exactly the same. Or they're exactly the opposite, right? Why is that? Why are they exactly opposite? Pay attention to what x is. Eight. It's negative 8. So why are we getting the exact opposite y value here and here? The same square, number. Then you've got to multiply it by one squared, one's cubed. One squared, one's cubed. So the, the cubed one takes 8, negative 8, and multiplies by itself three times. And the 8x squared takes 8 or negative 8 times negative 8 times positive 8. Right? So at that value of x, at the value of this coefficient, at least in the negative direction, these will be exactly balancing each other out, canceling each other out. Um, because both of them are 8 times 8 times 8. One is negative and one is positive. Okay? So if we go past negative 8, where these, the two biggest terms in the, in the polynomial are uh, equally matched, if we go past that, well, this will still be 8 times whatever that number is, 8 times 9 times 9. But this will be 9 times 9 times another 9. Right? So this, one, this, this third number will always be an 8. Right? It'll have two factors of whatever x is, and then just the third one's always 8. So when x is less than 8, then this is bigger than this. But once x gets beyond that 8, then that x cubed is larger. So when you get to negative 9, we shrink this down again. Now the x cubed is negative 729, and the 8x squared is 640. And forget about 7x. It's teeny tiny compared to those two guys. And if we keep shrinking this down <coughs> so we can see more, we let x become more negative. See, our y value is negative 3,149. Do you think it's ever going to come back up into the positives? And why not? Because we've gone past the, the negative 8 mark, right? Yeah. And so like as Carl said, in the positive direction, eventually x cubed becomes very, very big and everything else very small by comparison. Same thing in the negative direction. x cubed will become so big that those other terms won't matter. Even though this 8x cubed, or sorry, 8, 8x squared and negative 7x, when you put negative in for x, they're both positive, but look how small they are compared to x cubed. And if it doesn't look smaller enough, 
and just let x become more negative. You see how many times bigger this x cubed is than this 8x squared. So, are you guys remembering this discussion a little more? A little more now? So, in this example, as x goes toward, where's x going as it gets very large? How do we state where x is going? Positive infinity. Positive infinity. Okay. So as x gets to be very, very big in the positive direction, what kind of y values are we approaching? Positive. Positive. And just getting bigger, right? Mm -hmm. Get as big as you want. Does that seem reasonable? Can we make y as big as we want it to be? Yeah. So we could just keep going on and on and on forever and ever till infinity. Why do people say tell infinity? Because infinity isn't a thing. Do you know what I mean? That's true. You can't get to infinity. Exactly. But the funny thing is, hi. Hey, is Tanner here? Right here? Yes. Yeah, finally. I'll be that guy. Yeah, so if you go right get now, just come on. Now you can get in and get your physical. Mm. Just, just giving you the message. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so back to what you said, Abby, about infinities. You can't get to infinity. Buzz Lightyear, clearly incorrect. You can't get to infinity and then go past it. Um, but one thing is, you might think infinity is just like, okay, forever, right? It's forever away, it's really big. Some infinities are bigger than other infinities, though. What? What? How? Some like infinities are smaller than other infinities. Well, I'll show you how. We just showed, or we just looked at how, right? This guy right here, let's say we're putting in big positive x values, okay? Yeah. Well, this number can be as big as we want it to be. You just put in a really big x. This number can be also as big as we want it to be, right? But for any given x value, this one is going to be, well, eventually, as Carl said, bigger than that one, and then always bigger, right? So they're both going as far as we want. They're both going towards infinity, okay, towards eternity and forever, but this one's doing it faster, okay? So in that way, that infinity is bigger than this infinity. When we say infinity, we're talking about where we're going and how maybe how fast we're getting there. Okay? And the x cubed is getting there faster than 8x squared. Okay? If we were to just put in, just keep putting in bigger and bigger values of x, we get to a million and, and let's stop and take a break and look at where we are when we put in a million. You put in a million for x, and you look at x cubed and 8x squared, x cubed is going to be bigger. It's going to be bigger than 8x squared. All right. So its value is bigger than the other. We're talking about how they're, what they're moving toward, and x cubed is, is just always going to be bigger. It's, it's, it's infinity is bigger than 8x squared. But don't need to worry about that. We'll use that quite a bit later. Quite a bit later. So now, why? If x goes towards negative infinity, which is what we just looked at in this sketch, x is going towards negative infinity, and now we're looking at y is uh, right here, this final blue value, um, it's going to also negative infinity. So let's, let's reiterate this, or maybe draw it in a different way. Uh, in the example that we just looked at, if we were to look at the graph, okay, the example that we just looked at, if we go out this direction, right, x towards infinity, right, then what's y doing? What kind of y values is this example getting? Big, going to x is positive, 
x is positive to infinity, y is also positive to infinity. x is going to get really big, y is becoming really big in the positive direction. Okay? So the graph eventually would look something like this. It's moving to the right, it's also moving up. x is moving towards infinity, y is moving towards positive infinity as well. Okay? Okay, now x is going the other way, x is going towards negative infinity, and y is going to do what? Okay. Negative infinity, you're going to put a negative into that x cubed, and you're going to multiply it by itself three times, and you're going to get this negative times negative times negative, really big negative number. So it's going to the left, it's also going down, x is going towards negative infinity, and y is going towards negative infinity. Okay. Um, so who's to blame for that in, in this polynomial? Who's causing this to happen more than anything else? What's causing this, these y values to be these either big positive or big negative numbers? The degree. The degree. The, yeah, the, the, the variable with the greatest power, the one that decides what degree the polynomial is. Okay. The biggest power will have the, the biggest influence on what y values we get, what the output is for the polynomial. Okay. Whatever it is, whatever that power is, that biggest power, the degree, that's the deciding term. Okay. If we got rid of that, if we, if we didn't have x cubed, it would be this guy. This would be the big, biggest one if that wasn't there. Right? And if we got rid of both of those, this would be the biggest term, and it would decide the most uh, what the y value is going to be. <coughs> So if that's true, what if we change this just the slightest bit and put a negative in front of it? Does that change anything? Does that change as x goes to positive infinity, what y would do if we had a negative in front of that x cubed? So if, let me uh, maybe bring in a new so that it's not confusing for me. Um, we change this to the slightest bit by putting a negative in front of it. Then as x gets to be really big, the positive direction. And if we're talking about big, we're talking about eventually, right? We're talking about uh, at some point, or, or at some ridiculously large x value, let's compare uh, what all these terms are. Which one's going to be the biggest? So the, the biggest term here, no matter um, <clears throat> if we have a negative or not, this one is going to be the biggest in magnitude, right? It might be a negative number, which is technically a small number, right? It's smaller than a positive number, but it's bigness, it's magnitude, it's distance from zero, it's absolute value will be the greatest. Greater than this and greater than this and certainly greater than this. So this is the, big, the biggest one. So as x goes towards positive infinity or x becomes a bigger and bigger and bigger positive number, then what kind of a number is this going to be? Why negative? Um, but we're not putting in negative x's. Here's the thing that, that gets uh, people confused often. This negative is after you cube the number. Still but it would still come out negative. We're going to put it in x that's positive. Cheyenne, what's the? <laughs> How do you know that the negative is outside of the? So it's either outside or it's inside. Yeah. Right? How do you know if I want it to be inside? No if there's no parentheses, yeah. If there's no parentheses like, like this, it's outside. If I want it to be inside and I want the x to be negative, and then to multiply that negative by itself three times, I have to tell you that by putting parentheses around it. The assumption otherwise is that, there, that it's like this. 
Um, um, just like this 8x squared. We, we kind of know, after we practice this a lot and, and, uh, and gone over it many, many times, we know that this means to square the x first and then multiply by 8. Okay? Maybe a less experienced person who's just learned about exponents would think, take 8 times x and then square that number. Okay? But that's not how it works. Right? If I wanted that to be the way it was, I would put parentheses around it. Okay? Now it's changed. Now 8 times x first and then square it. But since, since there's no parentheses there, we assume that we square first and then multiply by 8. Here we assume we cube first and then multiply by negative 1. But if we put positive numbers in, we'll do positive times positive times positive. With some big positive number, like a 100 cubed would be a, a million. Right? So you get a million, and then we put a negative on it. So we get negative a million. Right? So we put a negative out in front of there. Those y values that in this example where there's, a, where there's no negative in front, I'm going to erase that negative. When there's no negative in front, well, the y values eventually, for a large enough x value, will go into the positive y values and never come back. It'll never come down again, right? Those y values will just increase forever and ever and ever and, and never come back. Never come back towards the negatives at all. But now those numbers that were so large and so positive have now multiplied by a negative. Okay? And we can add 8x squared. That's not going to change it much. And we can subtract 7x. That's not going to change it much. We can subtract 35. That's really not going to change it much at all. We're talking about putting x's like 100 in there. That's huge. Okay. <coughs> so as x goes towards positive infinity, y will go towards negative infinity. And what about when x goes towards negative infinity? Which one? We'll go towards positive infinity. See what will happen is we'll put an x value in there that's negative. That that will include the negative in there. We will cube a negative number by itself or, or multiply a negative number by itself three times, which will come out negative. Negative times negative times negative is negative. But then we'll multiply it by a negative, and it'll become positive. So just the opposite of what we're seeing, just the opposite of what we're seeing here. X is positive, Y comes out positive. If X goes into the negative, when you, when you consider that this is the biggest power and it's being cubed, then Y is going to come out negative. But if we put a negative in front of that front term, then we'll put in a negative, uh, put in a, uh, a positive number, get out of negative, put in a negative, get out of positive, because we're multiplying that term by a negative. Once we've multiplied it all out. So this had a positive leading coefficient. Remember, leading coefficient is that coefficient in front of the highest power. And if you don't remember what a coefficient is, coefficient is just the number. Right there, there is a coefficient. There is a coefficient. In this case, negative 1 is a coefficient. Coefficient is a number that you're multiplying by the variable. So this is the case where we have <coughs> a positive leading coefficient. A negative leading coefficient. And that causes just the opposite of this thing to happen. Here we're putting in these positive x values. We're multiplying it by itself three times. And then we're multiplying it by a negative, which means the y values go into the negatives and never come back. And then we'll go towards the negative x's. We're going to negative x into uh, the, the cube. We cube it. It comes out negative, but then we multiply it by that negative leading coefficient, and it comes out positive. <coughs> Back to this one, we'll, we'll go back to the first page. When x is positive, y comes out positive, and when x is negative, y comes out negative. And why is that? Why is it when you put in positive x values, we get out positive y values, when you put in negative x values, we get out negative y values? <laughs> when we're 
putting in positive x values, we're getting out positive y values. Then when we put in negative x values, we get out negative y values. And remember, we are talking about big values of x. We're not talking about 0, 1, 2, 3. We're talking about 10, 20, 50, 100 big values of x. When x is big enough, the only term that really decides which, where we're going, which infinity we're going towards, is this guy right here. These ones are all so small by comparison that they're not really, they're not causing us to be pulled towards one direction or the other. It's this guy right here that's so big compared to all these other guys that it just runs away with it. If it's going to go into the positives, then even after you add up all these terms, you're still going to be in the positive. Because cubing a number is so powerful, it's so big, compared to these other guys here. Okay. So why is it, when we're just really concentrating on the x cubed, why is it that when we put in a positive x, we get out a positive y, and negative x gives us negative y? going towards infinity, we're talking about putting in 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, whatever. And just keep going positive. X is a positive number. Okay? And because we're considering such big X values, all we're asking is, where's is Y going? Is Y going to go far into the positive numbers as well? Or is Y going to go into the negative numbers? Where will it tend to go? Positive infinity. Now, why is it that it goes towards positive? Why is it when I put a positive number in for x, I get out a positive number for y? When, you know, we're talking about way out here. True. Okay. So when we take a number and we cube it, it'll always be, well, a number, a positive number and cube it, it's always going to be positive. That's not a big surprise. Positive times positive times positive is positive. But when x is negative, when x goes into the negative numbers, why do we get this negative? Because so x cubed, if you put in a negative number for x cubed, then x cubed is always negative. Um, so if we're looking at a degree 3, where x cubed is the biggest power, um, then at some point, if we let x go into infinity, then y will at some point uh, also take off into infinity and never come back from being positive. So all, all these cubed powers, all these powers or uh, degrees, these uh, third degree or degree three polynomials, are all going to do the same thing. When you put in a big x value, at some point, if x is big enough, then y will just take off towards positive infinity and never come back down. And if x is big enough in the negative direction, y will go into the negative direction and never come back up. Can we agree that, that all third degrees with positive leading coefficients will do that same thing? We change the numbers around. If we put a 5 in front of here and a 7 there and a 25 there and a 36 there, it's not going to make a difference. The, the infinity part of it won't change. As x gets bigger, y will get bigger than the positive, and as x goes to the negative, y will go to the negative. But are there other polynomials that will do the same thing? As x goes into the positive, y will go to the positive, and x goes to the negative, y goes to the negative? Even degree? But this one, is this an even degree? No. It's an odd degree. So will all odd degrees do that? Yeah, because 
we're talking about putting big values in for x. We're, we're again saying that this term right here will be the biggest term uh, in the polynomial. It will cause the biggest influence. We're looking at that here. x is negative 60. It's a very big negative number. And when we cube that negative number, it's a very big negative number. This cube is just the biggest term in the whole thing. We're only concerned with that biggest power when we're talking about large values of x. So whether it be to the third power, or the fifth power, or the seventh power, or the ninth power, any odd power, we'll do that same thing. Positive numbers go into x, and positive numbers come out. But if a negative number goes into an odd power, into an odd power, then you're going to multiply a negative number by itself an odd number of times, which will come out negative. You get those pairs of negative times negative is positive, negative times negative is positive, negative times negative is positive. But then you'll get that last negative all by itself. It'll multiply by negative and become negative. So, if you have a positive leading coefficient and an odd degree, And this will happen as x goes toward positive infinity, y goes toward positive infinity as well. And as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity. If we have an odd degree, uh, no, it's well. Let's look at an even degree instead of what an even degree would do. Um, Here's an even degree. Here's an even degree. When I slide this over and x becomes this big positive number, well, if I slide it way over here, it's going to be this really big value of x. And it's going to be an 8. Well, then we're going to take 80 squared, and then 80 times 1, and then just 1, plus 1. Okay. So which of these terms is going to be the biggest? X squared will be the largest value when you square 80. It's going to be much bigger than when you take 80 times 1. Okay. So this would be the biggest value. And we'll, when I put 80 in here, will this be a positive or a negative value? It'll be a positive. So slide this over to 80. Okay. Well, this y value is very large. So whatever 80 times 80 is, that's 6,400. Okay. That's very large. This is just 80 times 1. That's 80. 80 versus 6,400. That's 6,400 much bigger than 80. And then we add 1, and that's ridiculous to even add 1 to that. Who cares? It's just a 1. Okay. So that that pink value right there is becoming this very, very large value, and it's just taken away into the positives, and uh, definitely the sum of all those terms is going to be a positive. Okay. So let's just say that should apply to all even degrees. If I have out front an even power, x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the eighth, if that's the biggest power, yeah, it's going to be positive when I put in positive numbers. Even if I subtract off other stuff, like if I had x to the fourth minus 50x cubed minus 100 minus 1,000 x squared uh, minus uh, 27, whatever. Now, these are large values. But if x is big enough, then this will be bigger. Right? At some point, this will be so much bigger than all of these that they won't, even, they won't be able to subtract off enough to keep up with how big x is going to be, x to the fourth is going to be. Does that make sense? The biggest power will make the output so big in the positives that these could never bring it back down from there. So we're talking about putting big numbers for x, we're talking about just this highest power, the degree.
So if we look at a little graph of that. As x goes into the positives for even degrees, then we have a positive leading coefficient. We're going to see the graph go up. As the graph goes to the right, it's also going to go up. As x goes into positive infinity, y is going to go into positive infinity. Now let's go back to that sketch. What about when I let x be a negative number? This will be still 1. What kind of numbers will this be? Negative. 1 times negative x, that's going to be negative. What kind of numbers will this be? It'll still be positive because negative times negative, right? That's a square. Negative times negative will be still positive. Okay. Will all even powers do this? Do they turn negative numbers into positive numbers? Yeah, because they're multiplying a negative number in pairs, right? A negative times negative, positive. Negative times negative, positive. Negative times negative, positive. And then we just have positive. The whole thing's positive. Okay. So, okay. we go into the negatives. Even, let's, let's say we make this B a little bit bigger. Uh, give me the 15 or 16 here. Yeah. Okay. Well, now this guy is very big. Right? And even though this x squared is worth 1, it's, it's subtracting way down uh, to negative 15. You add 1, you get to negative 14. Okay. So it's pretty big. But once x is big enough, like negative 16, we can't really see where the top of, of, these, uh, of this rectangle is, but we do know. But if x is negative 16, this is negative 16 times negative 16, which is positive, uh, what's that? 256. 256, sure. 256, this is 16 times negative 16. That's negative 256. So that pink one is going away up there to 256. And then 16 times negative 16 is negative 256, which brings it all the way back down. The y value is now 0. And then we add 1, and that brings it back up to 1. Okay? But once x is negative 17, once x is negative 17, well, this is negative 17 times negative 17, which is, well, bigger than 16 times negative 17. Okay? So it goes way up there, and then whatever the value of this is brings it back down to a value of 17, and you add 1, and you're at 18. And as we let x become more and more negative, we keep going more and more into the positives. We can't even see it anymore. Okay. Point being that for an even degree, as x becomes more and more negative, this biggest term becomes more and more positive. And at some point, no matter what these are worth, they can't bring that number down into the negatives anymore. Um, okay. So even when x goes into the negatives, at some point when we're talking about an even degree, the y values will go into the positives still. But if we look at an even degree and a negative leading coefficient, over here and control it from my computer. If we now let the number in front of the x squared be negative, then we'll put it in a negative value for x. If you put in a, a negative value for x, then we'll square it, which will make it positive, and then we'll multiply it by a negative, which will make it negative. Okay. So whether I let x be a big positive number, it's all going to add up to a negative because this number will always be negative, right? This number will always be negative because we're going to put a number in for x and square it, which will always come out positive, and multiply it by a negative, which will make it always negative. So as you put in big values for x, this number becomes bigger and bigger and bigger in the negative direction. Right, negative 5,184. 
this 16x is big, but not nearly as big as this. And it just keeps going into the negatives, and there's just no coming back from those negatives. Even if we put a negative number in for x squared, when you square a number, this negative 14 squared is going to be positive, and you multiply it by a negative 1, now it's just always going to be negative. So we come back over here. As x goes into the positive direction, y will move into the negative. And as, as x goes into the negative, y will also go down into the negative. Notice it wants you to finish this statement, f of x or y, if you're uncomfortable with f of x. It just means the output, f of x means the output, is going towards what? As x goes toward positive infinity. Goes positive, f of x will be positive. And why is that? Because x is positive. But now here negative. Why is it negative? Alright, look at the largest power. That's how we find the degree. Right? The degree is 6. The degree is what kind of degree? Well, what kind? It's an even kind of degree. Okay, so what? So what about an even degree? What does that matter? But just, just this part, just this part, yeah, this will always be positive. Okay? You put in a positive x, you'll get, your, and you multiply by itself six times, you'll get a positive x, and, or a positive uh, output, a positive y. And then you multiply it by a negative, and that positive number now becomes negative. So what does it approach? Negative infinity. I want you to also say f of x goes toward what kind of value? as x now goes the other way towards negative infinity. What happens when you put in big negative values for x? Which way is f of x going to go? Still negative, right? Now I'm going to point to this x to the sixth. Why am I only talking about this x to the sixth? How come I'm not talking about this stuff at all? Because it doesn't matter nearly as much as this. If you compared the x to the 6 and the x cubed numbers, this would be just, whoa, way, way, way bigger. It's not even, not even fair to compare the two. Okay. So, and I'm only looking at this because we are putting in big numbers for x. We're not putting in numbers like 0 and 1 and 2. We're putting in negative 800,000 million billion. Okay. And at that point, as we move towards negative infinity, what's going on? Well, this is going to be the biggest number. It doesn't, it's a waste of our time if we're just asking which direction is y going. It's a waste of our time to consider these. So we're just looking at this, and when we take a negative number to an even power, you're always going to come out positive, because negative times itself an even number of times will always be positive. 
Then we multiply it by this negative, and we're still moving towards negative infinity. So this graph looks like this on the ends. Notice I'm not drawing any middle parts because I don't know what that looks like yet. But I do know as I put in bigger numbers for x, I take those x values and I take them to the sixth power, which will be positive, and then multiply by a negative, which makes it go into the negative y's, and the same for negative x values. <coughs> tending to go as x goes toward infinity. Y negative. Why, why is the output, when we put in big enough x values, why does the output toward tend to go into the negatives and never come back? Because the leading coefficient is negative. When we talk about positive x values, no matter what the kind of power it is, whether it be even or odd, it's just positive numbers times themselves are always going to come out positive. And then if you multiply those positive numbers by negative 6, we'll be going into the negative y values. Now where does f of x go as x goes the other way towards negative infinity? Still towards negative? Now we're going to take a negative number. When we talk about going to negative infinity, we're going to put a negative number, a large negative number, into these x values. We'll put them there too. It's just that it doesn't really compare when we square a number compared to taking it to the fifth power. Okay. So we're going to take this negative number and take it to the fifth power. Forget about this for a second. We're going to take a negative number to the fifth power. That's going to come out as a negative times negative times itself, five times. Yeah, negative times negative is positive, and then those other ones, negative times negative is positive, and this last negative by itself multiplied, making the whole thing negative. So this part's negative, and we multiply that by a negative six, it comes out to be positive. So this always negative when x is negative, and then multiply by negative six, it comes out to be positive. That's a So let's put this together, this knowledge together with, uh, with the stuff that we have been doing, evaluating, uh, put it all together, we're going to graph some polynomials. They're going to be kind of rough, but pretty, pretty good. They're going to be fairly good. So here's how it looks. I'll just, I'll just lay it out in general. We want to get that end behavior. That's the stuff we've been talking about this whole time. As x gets into the positive uh, value, positive infinity, where's y going? So on. Um, so we want to get that correct, and then we just want to plot some points. Okay. Because this tells us about the ends. This tells us about way over there, way to the left and way to the right. Okay. But in the middle, kind of close to the origin, what's going on? That's what this is for. So we're going to graph a polynomial. We'll do. Um, Now you don't 
don't have to do it in this order, but I mean, when you get done, you'll have done it in some order. We're going to do it in this order right now. First, we'll look at the end of the A here. We just want to figure out where should we take the graph. You know, where, where should we point to the, the arrow of the graph? Should it point up because we know it's going to keep continuing up? Or should it point down because we know it's going to continue down? So, as you move this direction, what's the end behavior to the right? Well, this is where x is getting to be a very, po very large po positive number. Okay. So, what kind of values are we going to get out of this? What kind of output are we going to get when we let x be a really big positive number? Are we going to get big positive numbers or are we going to get big negative numbers? Why? Right. What about this minus 4, though? It's so small it doesn't matter. This x squared, even though it's positive, is so small, it's not going to make much of a difference. It will make it more positive, but not by much. Right? Eventually, the, the big pink bar to, the, to this whatever color bar this is, it's just that pink bar will be way bigger than that, that other little bar uh, by comparison. But x squared is not going to make much difference. Okay. So I'm just making a little note here. Okay. This, this is a note to myself that when I get done going through all these points here, I'm going to make it go off in that direction rather than this direction. As x goes to positive infinity, y goes to positive infinity. Um, what about this direction? As x goes towards negative infinity, what's y going to do? Are we going to go up this way or are we going to go down this way? Down. Why down? How come? Because x is Yeah, you put a negative number and you take it to the fifth, you multiply a negative number by itself an odd number of times, it's going to come out negative. And it's going to stay negative because there's nothing to change it out in front here. So this will just be a big negative number. Okay. Little note to myself, my graph should go down towards that direction. I'm not going to feel like I need to make my graph go through that arrow, but it does go in that direction. Okay. So that's end behavior. Check off. Now we're going to plot some points. How do we do that? How are we going to plot points? What's that? I take a, a, a table of values and then plug in some x's, get out some y's, and, and plot those points. I'm going to do that in three. Get some x's, get some y's. Right. You know, the, the points we're talking about are somewhere in here. We don't want to go too big either way because we already know what happens when x gets to be rather large. So we'll plug in numbers like uh, maybe negative 2. Negative 1, 0, 1, maybe we'll do positive 2 as well. You know, 4 points. That's a good amount. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Why don't you plug in those four numbers? Just get more practice uh, with your direct substitution. Um, all right, so this is a good lead in to. Uh, how do we do this faster? How do we plug these things in faster? So the scenario here is that we become experts by plugging numbers in. We know exactly what's going on. We know that we're putting negative 2 in here, taking it to the fifth. It's going to come out to be negative 32. It's going to come out to be negative 2 times negative 2 times 4. And then we're going to subtract 4, and that's where the y value comes from. Okay. So now we're so good at it, and now it's just a matter of time. Just, it'll, it'll get done. It'll get done correctly. But it's taking extra time. So. Here's one way to do it faster than writing it out. And if you have a scientific calculator, it can take quite a while, depending on the model. Uh, some of them are nice. How do you do that? Huh? How do you do that? Hit the y equals. This is the function part of the calculator. Ooh. Uh, so here you can put functions. Here's a function. y equals x to the fifth plus x squared minus 4. So we can put that in. x. 2 fifth plus x squared minus 4. So this is the main feature of the calculator. It understands that x is a variable, and it's ready for you to plug things in for x. Okay? So it's a matter of how do we do that. We can go to the table. That means hitting second, and then this button says table above it. 
<coughs> we want to put a negative 2, we want to put a negative 1, we put a 0, we put in 1. That's not working. Why did it do that? <laughs> negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or whatever. Where's the X? Right here. Right here. And then a five. Yep. Plus X. I don't even know how it works. I don't understand. calculator can do that for you. Um, again, we talked about the temptation to just take the easiest thing and do that, right? And we wind up being Wally's, in Wally's world and, and eat, drink, and steak out of a cup, okay? So if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know how to plug these numbers into X, you don't understand what the calculator is doing, or if these are magic numbers to you, don't use the calculator. Is they're not magic, they're just like, yeah, I could get that, I would get that, if I took the time to plug in those values for x. Okay. And I don't want to be theoretical, like, yeah, I could probably do that. No. If you know that you could get these values, if you took the, the few minutes that it takes to, to get them, then use your calculator. If you can't do it otherwise, practice doing it until you know what the calculator is doing. You know the calculator is just taking this, plugging it in there and there, uh, take it to the fifth, square it in, adding those together, subtracting four, and that's how I got negative 32. If you don't know that, stop using your calculator because it's just crippling you. All right? All right. So there's one way. You can even look at the graph. What the graph should look like. Hey, look at the graph. So far, we know the graph is right because, right, we know it should go up and to the right and also down and to the left, and that's what this graph is doing. Okay? We know we're on the right track here. So let's fill in those values. Negative 32, negative 4, negative 4, and negative 2. It's class. Make this negative 32. 
negative 2, make this negative 2 and negative 4. So negative 2, negative 32, negative 1, uh, negative 4, 0, negative 4, 2, negative 2, uh, or sorry, 1, negative 2. Can you re explain all of that? Uh, we know where we got these numbers. Yeah. Okay. So this is a point, negative 2, negative 32, negative 2, negative 32. Mm -hmm. Here's another point, okay. negative 1, negative 4. I thought I heard you say negative 2, negative 2. Did you say negative 2, negative I might have by accident. Okay, I just didn't know. 0, negative 4, and 1, negative 2. Let me uh, use a different color like first. There, and there, and there. Okay, now. You, that's a connect to these points, okay? So that. Pardon the interruption. Could you release the Carltonian members at this time, please? Thank you. Uh, no. So now that we've drawn it, we want to make sure our, our plot of the points. We want to make sure we connect these correctly, okay? Um, let me show you incorrectly. Be something like this. really common thing to do, okay? For some reason we want to work from the top down. We want to connect all these points down like this. Okay? But it's really the more of a left to right thing. If we did it this way, one thing that we know for sure, this couldn't be correct because this is not a function. How do you know this is not a function? It's not a function? This is this graph here does not represent a function. What's that? Cross the line twice. Yeah, if you if you look, say, for instance, right here, and I say, okay, input of zero, what output do I get? Do I get whatever this is, negative four, and whatever this is? That's three outputs. It's not a function. How many outputs are we supposed to have? One. One and only one. Okay, but here's what we need to do. We need to go from left to right, not top to bottom, not bottom to top. Yeah. Michaela? Sorry, one more. Which one? Wait, Gail Cole. Oh, that's not me. That's me. <laughs> the girl has flowers. Aww. <laughs> I got that one. Mr. Smart, can you see how many? No, we have to do it. It's up to you. Okay, I'll get a little bit more sticker. Okay. We need to work from left to right, which means we'll go through here. Then here, then here, then, and making sure to go up and to the right as we noted here. Okay. It doesn't have to go through these things that we made earlier, it just needs to go in the same direction. All right. Now, the calculator, that's one easy way to, uh, to get these y values pretty easily. And then there's this other thing. It's called. So what we've been doing by the way that we've been finding uh, the y value so far is called direct substitution. We're just taking the x value, putting it in where x goes, doing the operations to it, and then you know then we're done. Then we have the y value. Okay. So there's this other thing called synthetic substitution. Okay. So. Back to number nine. <laughs> you guys stop talking every time I turn around. Every time I walk across the room. This is not a very good day for all of you. Okay. So direct substitution would mean if I want to plug in an X value, I plug it in for these and I, I do all the, the work by hand. The synthetic substitution looks like this. Where do those numbers come from? The coefficients. the coefficients and the constant there. Okay. So here's a couple of rules for the setup. You gotta put the coefficients down, but you have to first make sure that the polynomial is written down in descending order of powers. Okay, that's one thing. All right. If there's a power missing, okay, like if we had this 
guy right here is very similar. 5x cubed minus 2x squared minus 15. What's missing? The x term. That's OK. Polynomials don't have to have all of the, of the powers represented. Put in a zero. Put in a zero to take its place. So there's no x term so here. So there's the x cubed. There's the x squared. There's no x's. Now that's not something we had to do to do direct substitution. But you do need to do that for synthetic substitution. You have to put in that zero? You've got to put that zero there where the missing term is if you're to write it in descending order of power. So write them in descending order of powers and put zeros as placeholders. You bring down the first number here, the number five. We haven't even really started yet. Now we can start. Okay. If we want to plug in negative one, which is what number nine asks us to do, here's how it looks. We take negative one, multiply it by five, bring that up here, negative five. We add them together, we get negative 7. We just add them together, we get negative 7. And then the same thing again. Negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7. We get 17. Negative 1 times 17, negative 17. We add them together, we get negative 32. And we're done. If we wanted to do 5, we just erase negative 1 and all that other stuff besides this and the starting 5. We just erase all that other stuff and start over with 5. 5 times 5, put that there, add together. 5 times that, add it together, and so on and so on. Okay. <coughs> um, let's see, let's go back. So let's say we had, had this guy and we wanted to plot those points, we wanted to get those y values. We can use synthetic, synthetic substitution to do that pretty quickly. Just set it up. Okay. What numbers do I write down? In the setup, what are these numbers? Right here. The coefficients. So first is 5. Then? We're looking at the coefficients, or sorry, that's a 1. I don't know why, where I saw 5. There's a 1, then what's next? Zero. 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 We got the 4th and the 3rd, then 1. And then 0 for the x, negative 4. Got to put those 0 placeholders in there, got to go down by uh, descending order of powers. Bring down the 1. We're ready to plug in lots of values pretty quickly and find those y values, okay? So we start with negative two. Negative two times one is negative two. Then we get negative two, this is four. Add those together, we get a four. Negative two times four is negative eight. Negative seven, 14, 15. Negative two times 14 is negative 28. Negative 32, negative 32. So we got negative 32 for our y value. We're done with negative 2, and we're ready to move on to negative 1. Why are we doing this again? To find these y values. Quickly. Didn't we already find them? Just showing you how we can find them in a different way. Oh. <laughs> uh, I did negative 2. I said I did negative 2. There we go. Negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Add it together. Positive 1. Add it together. Negative 1, 0. Negative 1 times 0 is 0. Add it together, 0. Uh, negative 1 times 0 is 0. And you just get negative 4. Negative 4. I won't do 0. Because you put 0 there, 0 there, you can see you get negative 4. We're not here to do silly work for nothing. <laughs> We're going to do this last time for 1. 1, 1, 1, one times 1, 1, 1. 1 is 2. 2 is 2. 2, one times 2 is 2. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 2. We 
you do too, quick if you wanted to, now that it doesn't take so long to do it. Two, two times one is two, add it together, two, two times two is four, add it together, four, two times four is eight, that's nine, two times nine is eighteen, add it together, two times eighteen, thirty-six, thirty-two. <coughs> So it's a lot faster than doing it by hand, uh, and it returns the correct value. So just to sum it up, end behavior. based on degree and leading coefficient. And then we can plot some points together with end behavior and we can graph.